What's up guys? Today I have another pen review for you. Um, as you can see from the box, it's another pilot pen. And the reason why I'm reviewing this pen is, initially I wasn't going to really record this pen. Honestly, I wasn't even going to try writing with this pen. Uh, I had initially bought this pen as a gift for one of my co-workers. Um, you, you know, he used to use fountain pens when he was younger. And, you know, when he saw that I was using fountain pens at work, you know, it kind of, like, piqued up his interest. Like, he was, he was surprised that people still use fountain pens. Um, and so, you, you know, for someone who I wasn't sure was really going to seriously use a fountain pen a lot, uh, I didn't really want to give something more expensive or something that wasn't really, you know friendly to a new user, you know, even though he's used fountain pens in the past, doesn't necessarily mean he has the same experience that I do in terms of a large variety of pens. So, you know, in term, I just ended up giving him a pl cheap platinum preppy. It's like a 4 or $5 plastic fountain pen uh, with a steel nib. It, it works, it writes relatively okay, uh, easy to maintain because it's a cartridge converter. And recently he, you know, he's been using it for the last few months and he's been very happy with it but recently the plastic cap did end up breaking and I figured you know what let me get something for him to kind of replace that uh, you know it is getting close to Christmas I could always get him something that is a pen that isn't necessarily expensive but at the same time will outperform the platinum preppy uh, and you know I'm just it's not Christmas yet but I'm just gonna give it to him now anyway because you know I don't really feel the need to wait for a special holiday to give someone a gift if you're going to give it to them regardless. Uh, you know, at least in this case, you can actually start using the pen uh, before Christmas actually hits. Um, and, you know, without further ado, uh, this pen, as you could re read here, is the Pilot Metropolitan. Um, like I said, at first, I wasn't even going to do anything with this pen. I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna uh, write with it. I wasn't going to review it or anything. But I decided, you know what, since I have the pen and... You know, I'm not giving it to him right this instant. Let me just pull it out, take a quick look at it. Uh, you know, I pulled out my loop and took a look at the tine alignment. Um, the last pilot pen I got, the Prira, um, the tines were very poorly aligned and you needed some work. So I figured, you know, let me check the nib on this. Uh, if it looks like it needs any work, then I'll do the work really quickly before I hand off the pen to him so he has as good of a writing performance as I could provide for him. Um, and... I was very impressed with this pen, like, I, you know, the time alignment was very good, um, the Metropolitan only comes in a medium nib, but you can get other models of cheaper pilot pens and swap out the nib if you're not happy with that size, um, the medium nib does write close to, like, a slightly thicker European fine nib, uh, but I'll show you that later in the, uh, in a quick writing sample. But here's the packaging, uh, I was actually, you know, pretty impressed with the packaging. This pen you can get the general price is like fifteen to twenty dollars depending on where you buy it. I bought this for fifteen bucks from Jet Pens. Uh, I had to order some Iron Gall ink so you know with Jet Pens once you get twenty five dollars you get free shipping. So I figured you know what why the hell not? It was also cheaper than getting it from Amazon. I think Amazon has this pen for um for like seventeen and change. Uh, and with prime shipping I would have gotten it shipped for free but Still, this was cheaper, and I had to order something anyway. The packaging, I was very impressed. Like, the outside box, yeah, it's okay, it's cool, not bad. But the inside, like, this isn't real leather. It's, like, kind of like a vinyl, like a vinyl material textured to be like leather, and it's also cardboard. But it's, like, it actually looks really nice in terms of packaging for a pen that only costs $15. And uh, for people who are fountain pen users and are li looking for a gift to give to like beginner fountain pen users this would actually make a great gift just because the packaging alone is very impressive uh, you can see here there's actually a flap here and there are actually two magnets you can see the shadows of them right there in the cardboard uh, that magnetizes it down uh, when you open it up you get a pilot converter with black ink you get the pen here I got the plain one in a black finish and then you know the standard padded base with the uh, the what's it called the strap to kind of hold the pen in place uh, when it's in shipping and whatnot. So you know, nice packaging. It's not packaging I would necessarily keep. You know, it, it it's not a very durable box like the uh, the standard Pelican boxes are very durable with the nice 
like metal barrel hinge that you can actually use for really good pen storage uh, for you know but at the same time like if you wanted to you could use this as pen storage um, I honestly I would just throw it away I think it's just great gift packaging that, that's just my opinion anyway actually let me put the ca cartridge away I don't necessarily need it and let me get the packaging off to the side so here's the pen I got it in uh, plain black I believe the Metropolitan comes in three colors. Uh, I don't remember offhand, but I'm pretty sure it's black, uh, gold, or like a tan, and also a like a shiny silver. Um, and then there's this plastic band here in the middle of the pen. You can see here it's actually a little shinier than the matte finish on the rest of the pen. And in those three base models, you can get like a dot pattern, a zigzag pattern, and this plain band. Uh, I also believe Pilot recently came out with like animal prints where you can kind of get a, they, they are, I think they're different colors, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't really remember offhand. Uh, you know, I haven't really paid attention to this line of pens for that much, uh, but you can get them where it has like an animal print. Like I believe like one's like a, like a alligator print. The other is like a, a leopard print. I don't know. You, you could check them out if you're really interested in that. Uh, there is another line where if you are interested to get different colors like i think like a uh, hot pink or whatever uh pilot does have another line called the cocoon um it's not a line that i believe is readily exported out to the united states i think it's a japanese domestic market pen and that pen actually costs a lot more uh i think when you can find that pen i i think it's like 30 to 50 dollars somewhere in that range you know definitely like more than double the price of this pen uh but in terms of everything else about the pen i think the size is the same the weight is the same uh nib feed that those are definitely the same so i don't really think it's worth it unless you really want the color coloration um but you know my first impressions of this this pen you know granted you know i am giving this away as a gift in a few days so i haven't you know full disclosure i haven't written with this pen for an extended period of time uh, i just went ahead filled it up you know did a general inspection didn't tweak anything and i wrote with it with it for around half an hour and i was very impressed um the body of this pen is made out of metal uh, brass i believe and then it's uh, coated so it's a very heavy pen and yeah, you know, personally, I don't really like super heavy pens. Uh, I prefer lighter weight pens. Uh, but I do know, you know, at least one of my other coworkers, he does kind of like heavier weight pens. Uh, you know, people have this mentality that a heavier pen has like a higher quality feel. And I will admit, this pen in my hand feels so much better than what I would expect from a fifteen dollar pen. It is heavy, but at the same time, the balance isn't too bad. Um, you know, one of my biggest complaints about some of the higher-end uh, Pelicans, like the Pelican M800, M1000, um, or honestly, even like the Mont Blanc 146, is that they're heavy, but not balanced well. The um, the pens are made out of, you know, resin, plastic, pressures resin, whatever you want to call it, but at the same time, a lot of the weight comes from the fact that the back piston is made out of brass, and it just makes the pen very back-heavy. This pen is heavy because the entire pen is made out of brass, uh, minus the section here. The section is actually made out of plastic. But because you see, like, the pen body tapers off as you get closer towards the end, uh, so you can actually post the cap on relatively securely, the balance is actually quite central to the pen. I I'd say, like, the balance point is right around, you know, like, right here. It's, like, right in the middle of the pen, and that's basically right in between your fingertips and the webbing of your palm. So it makes it feel very neutral and balanced. So while it's a heavy pen, it's not uncomfortable for me to use. Uh, if you do post the cap, the cap is also made out of brass. So this will make the pen quite back heavy. Um, but honestly, it's a pretty standard size pen. I don't really see the need for most people to actually post the cap unless it's something that they really want to do. You know, it's not a short pen like the Prira where it's uncomfortable to use because of how short it is. Um, if I actually compare it to an M600, which for me, I consider a standard size pen. It's like a reference pen for me. Uh, you can see that capped, the Metropolitan is actually very slightly longer, uh, just slightly longer than the M600. And then uncapped, you can see it's also slightly longer than the M600. So it's a standard size pen. 
in my opinion, you know, for other people, they may consider this to be a bigger pen if they're used to smaller pens. Other people who are used to writing with M800s and 1000s on a daily basis uh, may consider this a small pen. For me, it's a standard size pen, um, so I see no reason to cap it. Um, one, like I said, I wrote with it for around half an hour. It's very comfortable in hand because of the because of the bounce. But one of the complaints that I have is the transition between the section and the barrel of the pen. Uh, you can see here it has a pretty sharp, um, not really sharp, it has a very up dropped break in between the barrel of the pen and the section. Uh, and you know, if you were to hold the pen at the section, which is actually quite slim, I guess it's not bad, it's not uncomfortable, uh, but for me, I, I tend to write my pens with a lower writing angle, so I tend, uh, in order to get the nib to actually touch the paper, I actually hold the pen around here, right where this section meets the barrel, and um, I do write with a very light hand. I don't really grip the pen that hard, so this section, uh, the uh, the diameter change doesn't really bother me. But if you're someone who likes to really death grip their pens, uh, that may dig into your finger and it may annoy you. Um, but in all honesty, it all depends on where you would actually hold the pen. You know, some people like to hold the pens higher, some people like to hold the pens lower. Uh, for me, uh, where I hold the pen happens to be exactly where that transition is. But it didn't bother me for the half hour of writing, so, you know, in general, I don't really write for that much longer. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not really, like, a heavy writer, I'm not an author or anything. Uh, so, writing for a half hour at a time is mainly for letter writing or journaling. Um, these nibs for the Metropolitan only come in medium, uh, and like I've said before in past videos, a Japanese medium writes usually one grade finer than the European equivalent. So a Japanese medium will write more like a European fine nib. Uh, in this case, because it, it is kind of like a wet writer, it writes like a very wet, fine European nib. Uh, I'll show you later compared to my M600, which is considered a very wet writer. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking into getting a nib, um, like I said, in this pen, you don't have the option. It's only It only comes in medium. But because you can swap it out with other cheaper Pilot pens, um, actually, let me just show you. I have here a Pilot 78G. Uh, this used to be one of the standards that I would reference as a good beginner's pen because, you know, they have a reputation for writing very well and they're inexpensive. You can get them from overseas for around 10 bu 10 to $12, including shipping, uh, but they have really high writing performance. Uh, one of the biggest things about these is that it has a plastic body, so it's very lightweight and just feels very cheap. Uh, for $5 more, you get a metal body that has a significant amount of heft and feel, like high-quality feel to it. So it's definitely worth the upgrade, and from now on, I'll probably be suggesting the Metropolitan or the 78G for a beginner's fountain pen. Uh, but with this pen, the Cocoon, the Metropolitan, the Penmanship, uh, Plumix, um, what else? A lot of the inexpensive Pilot pens... Uh, the feed and nib are actually just friction fit into the section, so you can actually just pull it right out, as you can see here. And realigning the nib and the feed and putting it back in the section is very simple, because it actually has the this cutout here and a nib that goes into these t um, this notch here on the feed. So there's no way for you to really screw up aligning the nib and feed back together when you're reinstalling everything back into the section. So like I said, um, although the Metropolitan only comes in medium nib, um, and in, if you don't want to pay the extra premium to buy the Cocoon that comes in a more variety of uh, nib sizes, you can always buy the Metropolitan and then get a 78G for $10, still less than a Cocoon. And in the 78G, you can get fine, medium, broad. Uh, the broad is kind of like a stub italic. Uh, if you want an extra fine, you could get the Penmanship. Uh, I believe the, the Plumix is like this broad stub italic. So, you know, you do have nib options. It will cost you a little more than the standard pen, that than the standard, you know, Metropolitan as is. But at the same time, for me, I kind of prefer a fine writing nib. Uh, so this nib size is actually perfect for me. Um, in terms of the nib quality, Pilot's pens on the cheaper lines are kind of hit and miss. Uh, so far, I've written with 
three different inexpensive medium nib pilots, and they've all written very well. Very smooth, just the slightest hint of feedback, uh, really good time alignment, good amount of wetness, not super wet by any means, but not dry at all. Um, with the fine nibs, I've written with two of them. Uh, one was a 78G that one of my friends owns, and that writes a, like a very fine line uh, that is, I, I'd say, right in the middle of the scale of wetness, uh, but still very smooth, which, like I said, a very slight amount of feedback. Good feedback in my mind, not really scratchiness, uh, not really something that anyone could complain about unless they prefer super glass smooth nibs. Uh, the other fine nib was in the Prira, which, you know, if you watch my video review on the Prira, you knew, you would know that I actually had uh, some problems with the quality on the nib, which I had to play around with before I really got the pen to write at a level that I would, ex you know, would prefer. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to get too far into that. You could definitely watch that video if you're interested in what happened with that. Uh, I haven't written with the broad yet. I know this 78G um, isn't that broad italic stub nib. I haven't written with it. I've never inked this pen up. This this has kind of become like my demonstrator for removing the nib and feed from the section of the inexpensive pilot pens. Uh, one thing to note that I've kind of discovered is that the fines write like an extra fine European nib, but the mediums don't necessarily write like a fine European nib. They're actually kind of a little bit in between fine and medium, but branching out towards the fine side a little more than the medium side. So, you know, there's a big jump in that uh, nib width transition between fine and medium in Japanese nibs and the European nibs, at least with the pilots. You know, I haven't really tried the Sailor nibs or the Platinum nibs, so I can't really say for sure about those. But with the Platinums, there's like a significant, significant jump from fine to medium. Uh, so I'll just open up this pen again. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It fits pilot, standard pilot cartridges, obviously. Um, this pen came with a Con20 aerometric converter, which works fine, holds a decent amount of ink. I believe people say that this actually holds more ink than the Con50, which will also fit in here. Unfortunately, the Con70 will not fit in here. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's a problem with the length of the pen, but the Con70 converter is actually too wide to fit into this barrel. So, you know, there's that. But, you know, if you get it in a medium nib, um, even though it has like a slightly better than medium wetness to it, uh, you sh should be able to write with it with no issues. Uh, the cap itself does not have a liner from what I can tell, but it does snap in, as you, as you can hear here. It snaps in pretty well. I would think that it would seal pretty well as well. Um, but because the nib isn't particularly wet, I think, you know, you could leave this pen overnight with no issues. You won't really have the nib dry out unless you have an ink in there that's super dry. Currently, I have a Diamine Sapphire in there. Um, I didn't really get a chance to try it out with my usual quick drying on the nib ink, uh, 54th Massachusetts. But like I said, I don't think it'll be an issue. There's no inner cap, but it seems like it's sealed relatively well. Now... Let me get to a blank page. Here we go. I have my little journal here. Um, this is with a three and a half by five and a half inch Clairefontaine notebook, uh, which is a uh, ninety grams paper. Uh, very smooth vellum paper. You know, with really wet pens it, and certain inks, it will show through, but not necessarily bleed through. Uh, you can see here it's actually showing through here. This is um. Noodler's Base State Blue. Super smooth, obviously. Um, like I said, this pen, it's probably hard starting a little bit because I had this open and I was waving it around for uh, quite a bit. But very smooth. Like I said, with just the slightest bit of feedback, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's scratchiness. It's just like, it's just paper feel. Uh, and in general, you don't really get paper feel with Clairefontaine because of how smooth the paper is. Um, so, you know, if you want a glassy smooth nib, you'll probably have to do some work on this. But in all honesty, I've yet to get a nib from a factory that was glassy smooth. Uh, usually they still required some smoothing out, some rework. So let me just quickly write with it. And as you see, my standard writing 
uh, grip, my thumb is right over where that transition is from the section to the barrel. So, like I said, it writes relatively wet. Uh, Diamine is a very wet ink, um, but at the same time, you know, I could write out this entire section. The quick brown fox. And you can see, it, it, you know, it doesn't really get a chance to dry out um, because of how much ink it actually puts down. And I will write with my, this is my uh, Pelican M600 with a fine nib, uh, but because it's really wet, it writes just a hair thicker line width than a standard European fine nib would. So, like I said, uh, generally pilot mediums write closer to a fine, but just a slayer, uh, a sl slight hair thicker than a, than a standard European fine nib, but with a really wet uh, European nib, you can see there that the line width is basically the same because the fine European nib on the Pelican is actually very wet, so that will increase the line width just a little bit. So. Yeah, um, that's kind of my review of the Pilot Metropolitan. Um, like I said, a great beater pen, a great beginner's pen. You know, because this pen is metal, it'll be durable. It, you won't have to be worried about it cracking in your pants pocket like a Platinum Preppy plastic pen would be. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about getting the finish scratched up because it's a cheap pen. But you have great writing performance. Um... If someone steals this pen from you or whatever, you won't really care that much. Granted, you know, it is $15, but for a fountain pen, $15 is actually not that expensive. And like I said, it, with the packaging, considering the heavy feel of this pen and how nice and sleek it looks, um, it would definitely make a great gift pen, even for someone who's really into fountain pens and has their own pens. Just because, you know, in my opinion, with the writing performance, you know, even if you have more expensive pens, you know, like for example, I have more expensive Pelicans and stuff, uh, but I would have, have no problems writing with this pen. And, you know, another thing to note is that because it is a slip cap, uh, it's, you know, if you work in an office environment or you're a student and you have to take notes, uh, but you're not writing for longer sessions, this makes it a lot easier uh, just because you could just snap the cap on and off without having to unscrew it um, versus something like here, like a Mont Blanc, you know, if I were to, uh, this is a one, my 146, if I had to take quick notes, I would have to, like, unscrew it two times, take, jot down notes, and, you know, with certain inks, I don't necessarily want to leave it uncapped for an extended period of time, so I'd have to screw back, uh, you know, Pelicans aren't as bad, because with Pelicans, the way the threads are, you just turn one rotation, and the cap is basically off the pen. So, yeah, I love this pen, uh, I will probably end up getting one for myself, just as like a beater loaner pen um, and I, I may actually just get a few of these just to hand out as gifts for Christmas uh, you know try and convert people more people to fountain pens without necessarily feeling bad about if they were to ruin like a nib on like one of these more expensive pens so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching